Welcome to All For You Castera. We are back again with another channel message for the collective. But before we jump right in and get started, I just want to take a moment and say hi and welcome to new subscribers. I am so, so, so happy to have you on board with us. Thank you for becoming part of the All For You Kiss tribe. As always, it is an absolute honor and blessing to read for each and every single one of you. That being said, we're going to jump in. Um, we have quite a few new decks here and, um, all I did was clear them out. I didn't really flip through them. So it's going to be a surprise for me as well as you. <laughs> okay. So let's get started. All right. We have healing. I feel like this is going to be a very self message. So yeah, family and tribe. Okay, so for some of you, you could be trying to heal ancestral things that are coming down the line, and I hear the buck stops here. So I kind of feel like I'm talking to someone who is trying to heal themselves and then in turn heal the family line. So negativity and toxicity is not going to be t passed down to the next generation. So I feel like you're going to be that generational curse breaker or that's what you're going for. I feel like, um, I feel like you have ancestors watching over you. Yeah. Hole in the soul. It could have something to do with loneliness or, um, maybe for, I feel like it could be for the feminine aspect. So some type of loneliness, maybe even while still being in a commitment, um, that there's still loneliness. That may be something that um, a feminine has viewed in the feminines before them that maybe they take on, I hear fixer uppers. So I don't know if uh, the masculine energies or other feminine energies that they take on are more fixer uppers and, and not so much stepping into an equal playing field. Perhaps that's something you're looking to kind of dismantle and set a new set of like role model for the young ones to come. Um, we do have have faith. So lean on your faith, lean on your ancestors and the knowledge that you've learned. I feel like it's super important. Um, there may actually be something along the lines of narcissism that, um, maybe the feminines choose narcissistic partners and it is, it, it's, it's been a thing where there's been imbalance and, um, even rejection in, um, like rejection towards children or rejection towards uh, the significant other. And it just sets like a bad example. That's kind of what I'm like, maybe like feminine feminines are nothing more than just um, than just a body is kind of what I'm getting. Um, or maybe temptation to seek outside of a commitment victim consciousness, right? I feel like there are a lot of things that I feel like I'm speaking to someone who sees a lot of different aspects of unhealthy, toxic connections and is looking to take a completely different route. I love that. I feel like you see very clearly that you don't want to experience those types of behaviors from a partner and therefore you're seeking something completely different. Um, you know, you may even decide that you don't want to partner up or um, maybe that's not going to be for you. Um, there are certain people who enjoy their freedom and may take that for pretty much the whole of their life. They may t take on partners here and there, but I kind of feel like you may decide that that's going to be your your life, a life of freedom and wild and living in your authenticity and going with the flow, whatever makes you happy. And maybe you don't want to be locked down in a situation or a marriage. Um, you know, for some, that's, that's the thing here. Unleash your creativity. Yeah, maybe you just want to be free to follow your own path and to create your own legacy. Dreams. You want to follow your dreams and make them come true. Um, for some of you, you still may want a partner, but you're looking in a different direction. You're looking at some, someone who I feel like a really healthy, um, relationship has a certain look to it. It doesn't have one partner that tries to suffocate the other partner or tries to slow the other one down or tries to pull the other one back. It has two people who 
um, genuinely want the best for each other. So if, if my, say I have a partner, I want to raise that partner up, I want them to be their best best version of themselves so they can explore and crush those goals that they have in life, right? Um, I want to be that number one cheerleader. I don't want to be the one that kind of slows them down or tells them what they can and can't do. It's like I, I signed up to be um, a significant other, right? A partner, um, not a mother, right? Or, or a father if that works for you, right? Um, and I feel like maybe you're just looking for something that would be um, because we have sadness here. It's like less of a burden on the soul. I feel like a lot of people out there choose, choose to have someone in their life just to have someone. And even when it stops working and things get sour, some, sometimes people stay. And I feel like maybe you've decided that that's not something you're willing to do. Um, sitting in a situation that is unhealthy, toxic, or, you know, done. It, it, things run their course, right? Um, not all relationships are meant to stay. Some are only to be there for a little bit of a time, right? So a reason, season, or a lifetime, you know? And I feel like maybe you've just decided that you're not going to be the one to tie yourself down in a toxic situation. I feel like that's something that you've seen um, as you've gone through life, right? Home. I feel like you want home to be... I hear anywhere I lay my head. So you want to be comfortable anywhere you decide to lay your head. I feel like you're someone who's choosing a life of adventure and a life of seeking versus a life of um, maybe the outside the norm, like the how we view how things are supposed to go. It's like, so we start dating someone and then we hit all these major milestones and then we get married and then we have children and, and you know, we make sure we have the house with the white picket fence. And, and some people really love that and some people want that and I'm not knocking that at all. In fact, I quite like that. But I feel like the person that I'm speaking for has decided that that type of lifestyle is not what they're choosing. And I don't know if you're getting flack for that from maybe people around you. It's like having, you have to have courage to be that explorer or to be that um, go-getter, that dream chaser. Um, how teachable are you? Yeah, I feel like that's another thing. I feel like you're looking around at these people who, it's like you may love them, but I feel like you don't vibe with them. It's like they don't have the same mentality that you do. They don't have the same big picture sight that you do. They can't see past the situations that they're in. It's almost like I hear you can't see past your nose. And it's like, um, so you can't very well, I can't expect you to very well understand where my perspective is going or what my big picture looks like. It's like, because you can't see that far. Um, I feel like you, you're a dreamer and I feel like you've got that big picture sight. You might have a soulmate coming in and this might be someone who ticks all your boxes. Maybe somebody who wants to run wild with you, someone who wants to encourage you. Um, and I feel like if you come across someone who has the same type of view for the future that you do and isn't someone to hold you back or pull you down or mistreat you in any way, I feel like you would absolutely give that person a chance. That's kind of what it feels like, but you want to break those cycles. You want to experience something different. And if you ever do, by chance, someday have children, you want them to see your version of it versus maybe what you saw growing up. I, I, that's kind of what I'm getting. It's like, what you saw people going through and um, kind of pushing out there as the norm. That, oh, that's the norm. It's like, but you guys fight all the time. Oh, that's the norm. And it's like, I feel like there's a new dynamic and a shift that you want to be the creator of selling out. It's like, we're not going to do that. We're not going to sell out. We're not going to become like everybody else. Um, maybe a lot of people have procrastinated about their dreams and pushing forward. Um, you could have even been with partners who kind of, you know, procrastinate when it comes to their dreams and I feel like you weren't sticking around for that I kind of I don't I feel like there's a, a freedom here there's there this is says uh sexual arts so it feels more like there's a freedom here and there's an authenticity here and there's a um I feel like there's just a different view entirely I feel like you see the world very different 
um, kind of like an artist with a paintbrush. It's like anywhere I go, I can create my own tapestry, right? I can create my own um, view of what the world looks like because I'm the creator. I hold the brush, right? And I feel like that's the type of person I'm talking to. You've got that Phoenix rising energy. Um, I feel like you're sensual and powerful and I feel like it shows love. I feel like there is a great depth of love within you. I feel like there's a love for exploration and I feel like that kind of reigns over all. Um, take off your mask. I feel like that's, I feel like that might be actually part of your, pur your purpose is to just be out there experiencing and all of these soulmates that you come across, um, whether they're a friend or lover, um, I feel like you're teaching people that there's a different way to move. You're showing people that they can carve their own circular or squiggly line, their path, and it can be just perfect for them. It can be outside of the norm and still be beautiful and still be full. Um, I feel like that's kind of what you're you're showing people. They can take off their mask. They can be authentic. Um, I feel like you're living proof of that or you will be. I kind of feel like that's what the energy of this is. I really love this energy. I really love the fact that you're so unique and authentic to yourself and you're not going to allow past experiences to dictate how you yourself should walk um, when you're being guided by heart and soul. I really love it. I personally think it's amazing. You're probably a really interesting and amazing person to know and meet. I'd love to know who you are. If you want to drop a comment and say you're in the first reading, I'd love to know. Okay, let's see. Ooh, I'm so excited. There's so many new decks. Okay, we're going to go with this one. We'll see where it goes. All right. Oh, okay. What do we have? We have no and yes. How strange. Okay. So, yes, it says, did you smile today? Believe, implement, and solve, and no neg negation, doubt, and speculation. Okay. Hmm. Uh, you might be a little confused. Either this is you or someone you're dealing with. Um, you might not be sure what the right answer is. Is it no? Is it yes? Um, extremely fast, fleeting, or lost. I feel like maybe somebody puts you on the spot where you have to make a very quick decision. Um, this may be time sensitive. It could be at work. It could be in life. Like we have to take this option because it's not going to last long and you have to decide yes or no very quickly. Um, it could have something to do with the skills that you have um, and maybe expressing them or showcasing them. We have mas mastery, skill, and charisma. I feel like this is you. We have moon. This may be something that you've hidden for quite a while. Um, maybe something that you haven't expressed. Um, we have love, joy, and surprise. I feel like there's there's this surprise coming in. I feel like you may have a certain talent. Okay, so I could take myself, for example. I read cards, right? Um, someone might come to me and say, I can put you up on a big screen doing what you do. What's your answer? I need to know now. And I would have to quickly make a decision, right? Um, it would be a surprise, but it would be a joyful thing, right? It'd be a happy, happy thing. And that's kind of what I think this kind of feels like is um, this is like, a, so apply it to whatever it is your talent is. Someone might come up to you and want to showcase your talent or may want to kind of put you in the spotlight for something that you're doing, right? Um clock and I, I feel I hear time's ticking so I feel like um yeah I hear time is money baby so it's like I really feel like and I have found this star earlier and I stuck I was told to stick it there so I feel like um this this definitely kind of goes together I feel like somebody wants to kind of show you show you to the world or show you to a specific audience uh, clear purpose. I feel like you have a very clear purpose. And this would definitely be progress in the right direction. Um, I feel like I hear a rock in a hard place. I feel like maybe that's where you feel like you are. Maybe it involves a great move or maybe it involves a lot of time, effort, energy. Um, 
I feel like this is like something that you would normally want to take a little while to think about it, but it's like you need that, it, that yes or no is required right off the bat. Yeah, there's pressure there, but there's good energy. There's abundance, wealth, and a freedom. So you're focused on trying to make that really amazing decision. I feel like you're a really reliable person. So whatever you say is what you're gonna do. It's like when I say it, I mean it. Um, and I kind of get that energy. Let's see, is there anything else, Spirit? This is really neat. Loyalty, aid, dedication, judgment. I feel like you would be dedicated to this. I feel like it would further your path. It would probably be a really, I feel like this is going to be an offer that looks too good to be true, but for once it actually just is the truth. Um, we do have broken disappointment. Um, heartbreak, disillusionment, and I feel like that's what you're worried about. Like, does it look too good to be true? Um, one century, long, slow, sluggish. So I feel like you might be doing this for a period of time. This might be a contract that is a certain amount of years. Um, we do have a universe. Confusion, distance, alienation. Yeah, it may cause you to have to move further away from maybe where you wanted to be. I feel like this is a great opportunity, but it doesn't come with its downsides as normal opportunities do. You have to kind of weigh the pros and cons, but I feel like you have to do it at a really rapid pace. Um, I almost feel stressed out. Like it's so exciting, but it's stressing me. Um, and I feel like that's life. That's that's part of the joy of life. I feel like it's a really interesting opportunity. And I feel like maybe it's a once in a lifetime is kind of what I hear. Uh, password, privacy, confidence. I feel like this is something that they may ask you to keep very quiet until your decision is made or until something comes out kind of almost advertising this. You might be asked to not... Um, tell it to your platform or tell it to your followers or tell it to your friends or your family. It Maybe it's meant to just be, shh. And it might not, it might be a matter of days before they decide how they're gonna kind of break this to the public or break this to people around you, whatever this is. Um, again, I hear time is ticking, time is ticking. I feel like it's happening very soon. I feel like this is all going to be happening very, very soon. You're going to get that. It's like I hear big break. So you could be an actor or an actress and you could be getting out there. They could see you walking down the street with, uh, you could be walking your dog down the street. I mean, I just feel like this is going to be a very unusual thing and one that's going to catch you off guard, but it's really going to propel you um, into the spotlight. And I feel like that's where you really wanna be. Um, I feel like you've kind of been guided and I'm seeing, see, this says pendulum, but I'm also seeing, um, what are those called? Those, um, uh, dowsing rods. I'm seeing those in my head. So it's like guiding you. And I feel like your footsteps have almost been guided by spirit towards this opportunity. I feel like it is entirely always up to you whether or not you want to reach out and grab that opportunity. And I hear strike while the iron is hot. So I kind of feel like I'm talking to someone who is going to take it. They're going to jump at the chance to take this opportunity, whatever it is. It may involve a move. It may involve some type of fast moving and a touch of discomfort. But I feel like ultimately where you're going, it's leading you to bigger and better things. So, yeah. Initiative, set off, strive for, be optimistic. And I feel like that's kind of where you are. I feel like you're setting off on this new adventure. You're striving for, I feel like, greatness. And you're being optimistic about where this path may lead you. Run away. I'm hearing that song. Run away. Anyway. Um, danger captivity, freedom. It's like a fear of being held down. Um, that may be another thing. This may be something where you have to sign a contract, like I said, that gets you for a couple of years or something. Um, and you're thinking, well, if I sign that contract, what if I don't love it and I have to deal with it for a certain amount of time because it's near impossible to get out of that type of contract. Um, I feel like I hear it's all it's cracked up to be, which is not something I'm normally willing to say when it's something like this, but um, time. So 
accumulation. Yeah, again, it's that emphasis on time, temperature, hot, fast, are you ready? I, that's kind of what I hear. It's it's going to be something really spontaneous. Um, hot, far away, gap. Um, yeah, you might have to, again, this might be at a, at a distance. Um, I don't know, maybe somebody has to move to California or, um, let's see, is there anything else? Cause I feel like this energy is, it's so big. <laughs> it's so, it's so nerve wracking. Like my hands want to shake with it. Book, um, Mr. Achievement and Spirit. Um, I feel like Spirit is guiding you towards this because I feel like there's some level of achievement you're meant to be going for. Or you've been striving to get to this point where you can achieve what's been on your mind and I feel like you're going to get there. It could be with music. It could be with any type of talent at all. Um, acting. Wow. I feel like my throat chakra is just... Sorry, I had to take a sip. Okay. Really huge energy. I'm going to cut it there. I feel like um, huge emphasis on time. I feel like you will absolutely very shortly know if this part of the reading is for you. Um, it will be in the next, I want to say, two weeks, two, three weeks or less. Like it could be today. It could be as soon as today. All right. Wow. Really awesome energy. Okay, let's see what this is. Oh, I love new decks of cards. So much fun. Okay. All right. Oh, this is the new animal deck. I found another animal deck, and I love how those energies resonate, so I was hoping a new one might hold more as well. We have the hyena. All right. Um, right. I'm getting something along the lines of... Okay. So... Bear with me. I feel like this may be somebody that you're dealing with, this hyena energy. Um, I feel like you're a very loyal person. We have that dog energy. Um, I feel like we have this person with the bow, and they are aiming towards something, right? And I feel like you may be aiming some type of a truth bomb towards someone who is in this hyena energy. This hyena energy, to me, this person may be very stubborn as well, but it seems like this is the type of person who will smile around everyone and will laugh and crack jokes um, and almost put out there that they're very happy, that they're very content, life's great. But I feel like, you know, by looking at this person, I feel like you see through to the soul of people or you can tell in the eyes what other people are missing. A lot of people see this person as being very whole and very full and very authentic. Um, but I feel like you see different. You see this barren desert within this person. You see that they're not really happy, that they're projecting this um, painted picture and they're cropping themselves in. It's like you can see through that. You feel like you can see this person's very stubborn about holding that mask in place. Um, and I feel like it irritates you because you're here waiting for this person to open up. I feel like you're loyal to this person and I feel like you really care about this person. Yeah, I feel like this person may be one of those really showy people. They show up as that peacock energy, like that look at me, look at me. And I feel like that's how they boost their ego um, because that underneath of it all, there's so much missing and this person's suffering with like a lack mentality and this um, very barren energy underneath of it all. Um, let's see. I feel like they could be prosperous if they step towards you and drop the mask. We have happiness in the dolphin. I feel like you two may get along really well. I feel like even though you can see through this person, there's still that we can have fun together, but I feel like there's a part of you that suffers because you know it's not completely authentic. I feel like you see a suffering soul underneath of it all. Um, I feel like this is a friend, could possibly be a romantic interest, could go either way. So yeah, we have learning here and I, I feel like I feel like you're meant to be a teacher kind of for this person. 
Yeah, we have reciprocity in the honeybee. I feel like you want to share that sweetness. You want to share that energy. It's like you don't mind being busy helping this person work through their stuff. I feel like you just know that this person can live a happier life. It's like instead of projecting that there are these things that they feel great and secure and proud and happy, it's like you can actually help them get to a place where they don't have to pretend to be that. They can just literally be that. Um, there's leadership with the elephant. I feel like you might be taking a leadership role. Um, you might not even have to say anything at all. You may just by, uh, just by being and standing in your authenticity and being that lighthouse for spirit, I feel like you may be showing, You, I hear a way shower. So you're showing this person how to move. And I feel like inadvertently, whether you say something or not, I feel like this person is going to learn and grow in your presence. So for the duration of your friendship or your relationship, this person will continue to grow. They are taking cues and subtle hints off of you and they're milling them over and trying to apply them into their life. This is a slow process, right? So it's not going to be an overnight change. Um, and I know you'd love to see that, that complete quick snap at the finger turnaround. So this person goes from mask to open and happy, right? Um, but I feel like do know that this is a process. This is something that, this is like a pair of shoes that you're trying on. You don't know if you love them yet. You got to try them on, maybe walk around a bit. That's how this person is taking your little tidbits of information and energy and applying it to their life, right? So it's in small doses, but um, very effective doses is what I feel. So we have work and the beaver. Yeah, you're putting that work in. This person is putting their work in. I feel like they see you as a very reliable source. Um, they view you as a reliable friend, as a loyal friend, but also the information that you're giving them is reliable. It's worked for them. It's created change. Um, and I think they're going to see that more and more. And I feel like the loyalty is returned. Um, in this friendship. I feel like there is great purpose uh, for this friendship, for this relationship. Raven News. Um, you know, I hear dark-sided. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, this has to do with someone with a raven sight. Um, your person that you're dealing with could be raven sighted. Um, they could be gifted, and I feel like you may also be very gifted. Um, they may see views and glimpses of darker things. Um, and that may be something that bothers them. They might open up to you about this. I feel like your light sight, right? So you're dove sighted, right? And then there's this raven sight. I feel like um, both equally as gifted, but one feels more comfortable. Um, I hear the underlayer or the underbelly. So this is kind of like more the spiritual aspect of things. This person may be very comfortable with the darkness and the light may irritate them just a touch, but they're getting more and more used to your energy. Um, so I kind of feel like it's a balancing act. I feel like this person will still be able to see within the darkness. And I feel like, I don't want to say that this is going to rub off on you, but I feel like your sight is going to broaden because of this situation. Um, I feel like both of you come from different ends of the spectrum, both very, very important, and both with one foot in this realm and one foot out of it. Um, and I feel like that's the spiritual aspect of it is this person may see with darker sights. They may have visions of darker things going on in the world. You're having visions maybe of lighter things in the world and sharing that. Or for some... Okay, so there are a fair few who start out with raven sight and end in dove sight. So it's like you might start out and then you might be helping this person fine tune their sight so they see a bit of everything. It's like they're not really blinded by the light anymore, but they're not afraid of the shadow anymore either. They know that both are necessary for balance, right? I kind of get that. So 
you may be balancing each other out. So I feel like there's always, you know, reciprocity in a connection. So there's give and take. So you, I feel like, will be broadening yourself as well as helping this person expand. Um, really interesting read. Um, so we have the deer and power. Yeah, there's a lot of power in this. And groundedness. Yeah, it's grounding these new spiritual uh, techniques and things into the physicality. Um, and I feel like both of you will be able to utilize these gifts in really big, beautiful ways. I love this. Really gorgeous energy. <laughs> All right. Bunny. Okay, here we go. We're going to go here. All right, give me one second. I need to sit. Okay, we have another new deck. I don't know what it's going to bring, but I'm excited. All right. What do we have? Spirit. All right, we have vision again with the vision, that third eye sight. I do feel like I'm talking to somebody who could be clairvoyant. I hear profoundly clairvoyant, which is from another deck. Um, sanctuary. Okay, I feel like, I feel like, there might be somebody out there who has not quite fully stepped into their clairvoyancy. I feel like it could just be sparking up or just kind of be opening up. You might be very comfortable and right before bedtime or right when you're starting to relax um, and close your eyes for the evening, you may tire yourself out with like reading or watching TV or scrolling or whatever. Um, but I feel like when you go to close your eyes, your clairvoyant vision might be opening up. Um, and the way you'll know this is, well, the way it happens for me. I don't know if it happens the same for anybody else, but I can explain myself. Um, when I close my eyes at the end of the day, um, colors start to swirl um, through the blackness. You know, you close your eyes, it gets dark grayish black, right? Well, colors will start to to swirl in front of my eyes, right? And they'll come in like rainbows. So they'll so they'll swirl and they'll get brighter and brighter until they start forming pictures. And it'll be pictures of people and places and situations. Sometimes I'll see snippets and clips. Um, it'll be like moving pictures, almost like I'm watching a movie. Sometimes they're old time looking, um, which lets me know that there's uh, time in between. Or sometimes there'll be faces of people I know, or um, and then situations that I hadn't seen them gone through, haven't seen them go through, but can tell that that's what's caused the energy energy that they're kind of sitting in right now. It's like the past of the situation, so I'll get snippets of that as well. It's like that's how it kind of opens up, and it'll flow for as long as I kind of allow it before I fall into sleep. And normally those nights where I allow it to just do that, I'll have really vivid dreams. Um, really vivid dreams, really colorful dreams. Um, that's another way you'll know. Uh, clairvoyant people tend to dream in color. So if you have very colorful, vivid dreams, you have the ability to kind of step into your clairvoyancy. Um, I, I, I didn't realize that most people dream in black and white. I had no clue, but um, that was kind of explained to me after the fact. I always kind of thought what I was going through was normal and that everybody kind of went through the same things as me growing up. So, you know, but I feel like this is someone who's getting ready to step into um, maybe more of a third eye opening. Um, this can be a very powerful thing. Um, it's actually like... The way it can happen is very intense. Um, I know I had a couple really intense experiences, spiritual experiences, when it comes to a, a full opening. It's like, um, and you may have more than one experience with this as well. Um, when certain chakras kind of burst open and the floodgates are released, um, you'll have really profound spiritual experiences, ones that just like cannot be explained. So, and we do have family here. So you may be going through this and there is probably more than likely nobody really around who kind of understands what you're going through. There's no one to really talk about it with. Um, a lot of light workers and healers and um, 
gifted people go through this type of energy. Um, we're kind of meant to be that pillar of light in our families that we come into. Um, so normally you don't really have someone you can talk about it to. It's kind of like a learn and grow as you go and you kind of search for the information out there somewhere to see if people are going through similar situations. So that could be you. And I'm sorry, I know that it's a bit lonely and it can be a little scary too because you know, these experiences are not something that everybody talks about. Even if they have them, they don't normally uh, talk about them too, too much um, because they're so different. And there is a lot of fear surrounding being completely open and honest about spiritual experiences, right? Um, so that could be you. You could be going through that. Um, you could be turning to music to kind of just calm yourself. It could be meditation type things or softer music. You may be opting for that um, to kind of just calm yourself or to flow with this energy that might actually help you open up to this energy as well. Um, you know, if you're scared, I, I do want to say this, if you're afraid, call on Archangel Michael. And when I say nothing gets past that sword and shield, I mean nothing. There is nothing you have to worry about. Um, you just ask Archangel Michael to come on in and guide you and protect you when you're afraid, okay? Um, you'll be all right. He won't let anything in that is not of the light, okay? So you don't have to worry. If there's something you're experiencing after you call in Archangel Michael, just know that you're okay, right? That you're being protected, that nothing's going to flow through and harm you, right? Learn how to protect and shield yourself as well. Um, going to be really, really important part of your soul journey. If you are walking a spiritual path, you have to know how to cloak yourself and shield yourself and clear your energy. Super, super important. First places to start. Okay. And welcome to the journey. It's really not so bad. <laughs> Healing. Yeah, this is a healing journey. A lot of healing will take place as you are going through these awakenings. A lot of times the catalyst for these awakenings is really tough situations. Um, really, I mean, the ones that test your strength, the ones that um, start you on your journey at ground zero. That Those are the kind of the ways that spirit will open up. Um, if you are going through heavy trials and tribulations, it could be uh, relationship things, it could be family things, it could be job things, it could be suffering and loss. Um, a lot of times those are huge catalysts to um, the awakenings and where you start to build up your own strength. And it's not really, you're not really building strength that you don't have you're actually starting to notice the strength that's been within you the whole time. That's kind of the way they're open, opening up your eyes or your eye <laughs> so you can see the strength that you actually have. Um, because a lot of the times, you know, maybe we do step into victim mentality, but spirit sees that we have the ability to travel really, really far on this journey and they get us out of that victim mentality. It's not that we can't be victims on this journey um, because sometimes we are pointed at and poked at and prodded at and um, dismantled, picked apart. Um, they do that to the light a lot. You know, there is something that I watched this morning. I am going to put it in um, the comment section with my timestamps. If you're a light worker and you're on this journey to any light worker, what I saw this morning um, on another channel was absolutely fabulous. So I'm just gonna post it in there. If you feel like checking it out, it might really help you see very clearly or to just know where you are along the journey. Um, I, I wanna say kudos to you, I think you're amazing. Thank you for being an amazing light worker. We need everyone that we can get. All right, compassion. Yeah, I feel like it's just showing you all of the things that you're going to experience. I feel like you come to a place where you're compassionate, even for those, and you're kind, and you're understanding and empathetic, even to those who hurt you, those who misunderstand you, those who try to uh, thwart you, try to bring you down, uh, try to, you know, like I said, dismantle you. I, they can't sway you. I feel like we all as light workers and healers and um, these lighthouses for spirit, we step in here and 
really what it is at our core is we are a light and we are unshakable and unbreakable in our resolve to stay and not only to stay and shine that light, to become more of our light as we go. Um, and that will irritate people's demons. You will face opposition along the journey. Know that. Um, but know that as a spiritual light warrior that you are coming in, you know, you come in as a warrior of light and that's what you're doing. You're, you're battling or beating back the darkness with just as you step into your authenticity, there's nothing you have to do. You don't have to carry a sword and shield. Spirit does that for us. Um, but I feel like, you know, we become unshakable as we go along this journey. And I feel like if you're not there yet, just know that you'll get there. Um, keep putting that effort and energy in and you will go far. Um, it is actually fun. You will come across a lot of people on this journey who are a lot like yourself, who, um, you know, show up real big like you do and are not scared of your light, who actually enjoy being in it. People will be magnetized to you and people will be repelled by you in the same, like you could walk into a room and half the room will separate and they'll be repelled by your energy and the other half will welcome you with open arms. That's just kind of the way it is. So I do need you to know that it, sometimes it's nothing you've done. And I, I feel like I want to say, sweetie, it's nothing you've done because I feel like someone is actually suffering uh, right now now with this light and I understand it because you can walk into a place and people will automatically hate you and it's not even just like the like a strong dislike they will literally hate you and you have done nothing but enter the room um and I totally understand this so I want to say that that's actually unfortunately really normal on this journey you will irritate some people to the point of hatred um and I know that sounds scary and I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I need you to know that there will also be people that you will inspire to love you greatly. There will be loyalty and friendship and unbreakable bonds that will come with it as well. There is a balance and you'll come across both. Um, it's part of the adventure. Spirit wants you to know it's part of the adventure. Um, yeah. There will be a lot of people who desire you, um, some for good reasons and some for not. Um, there will be toxic connections that you will enter into with a hopeful heart. Hopefully I can help this person or hopefully I can fix this person. It's part of the journey. Um, I feel like every spiritual, uh, empathic, lightworking person has come across a narcissistic, um, toxic vampiric type energy who kind of drains us dry and um that's part of the path I'll, I think a lot of the times we go through that so we can learn what we don't want so we can very clearly see what we do want and it helps us to grow and to understand and to love ourselves there even in the darkness I feel like that's a really really key point in the journey this has turned into a very this is how the journey works um so I am going to post that video in with um what group is this two three i don't remember how many cards i've done <laughs> whatever one this is <laughs> um and i feel like it might help you so if you're not there yet or even if you're a seasoned veteran on this journey this spiritual journey um i feel like you start to see why you've been through what you've been through and um yeah, there's a lot of beautiful knowledge, a lot of illumination um, on this journey. And I feel like you just realize at the very end of it, all this journey has done was pull to the forefront all of your beautiful light attributes. It's pulled them all forward so they can shine for everyone else. So you can be a beacon of light. So you can be a friend. So you can be a guide. Um I feel like so you can help others find themselves just to be that inspiration. It's like, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And you are I want to say you're goddamn right. Um, I love that. I feel like um, I feel like that was my dad stepping forward. <laughs> my dad would say that. Um, magic. Yeah, there is magic and unexplainable experiences on this journey. And a lot of those are really fun and really amazing. And spirit will continue to surprise you along this journey. Um, I feel like have fun with it. And in the times where you need to heal and rest, do so. Um, 
times you need to shield yourself, do so. I feel like this journey is a gift and I feel like you're going to realize that even through the ups and the downs and the really bad things, when I look back at all of my trials and tribulations and all of my highs and lows, I am thankful for every bit of my journey. It has brought me to where I am now, which is not where I want to be yet, um, but I'm getting there and I feel like I'm still thankful for every single thing. You'll get to a point in your journey where you look back at those hard things and, and see how it really molded you, how it shaped you into being this strength and this light. Um, it didn't take my light from me. It dimmed it for a while. It actually strengthened my light and made me brighter. So I feel like it'll do that for you too. So I feel like I want to cry. So like, I feel like somebody is maybe in that really down part of the journey. If you are, big hugs and love to you. Just know that um, lean on spirit, lean on your faith. Um, reach out to others who've been on the journey for a while. Heck, reach out to me. Um, if you're going through something, maybe I can help. Um, I feel like it's a gift and you'll get to the point where you see it. You just got to get through the tough times. And I feel like you really can. Trust that you can. Um, lean on your connection to spirit. Um, that energy is really important. Yeah. That's devotion and leadership. I feel like spirit is just making it. Yeah, and then, then we have, uh, simplify. So I feel like spirit is just kind of simplifying the path and letting you know that it'll get better if you're going through a rough time. And if you're already on the other side and you've really done the work, um, really appreciate where you've been and just know that there's still more to climb. There's still more to go. There's still more to experience. I love it. Really gorgeous energy. I love it. I know it's hard, but I know you can do it. All right, we're going here. Wow. These decks are so interesting. Do I want this? No, I don't feel like I do. I feel like I want this. All right, we're going to go through here. Did I do this? Hmm. I think I did. Maybe I didn't do the blue one. Okay, bear with me. It's hard for me to remember. When I'm channeling, I don't I don't remember things. I will watch it back and it's all a surprise to me. <laughs> it's all like a brand new story. Okay, sacral chakra. Okay, it says the frequency of the, so the sacral chakra, the orange flower of life, supports our ability to flow with our desires and stimulates our creative power to manifest success and abundance in our lives. Okay. Okay. So we have the frequency supports our ability. These are going to be really a lot of reading. <laughs> it's harder for me. Hold on. I have to like, I can't see that far. I don't have my glasses on. So, <laughs> okay. It says supports our ability to harmonize and frequency of the heart with the frequency of the mind and an optimal ability to create the reality that we desire. Wow, okay, and then realization. So it says the frequency of realization supports the internal process of becoming aware of our heart-centered truth, as well as the external process of becoming our highest expression in this world. This is exactly what we just talked about. And I hear, remember who you are. So I'm going to take one more. It says remembrance. It says the frequency of remembrance supports our memory of everything that we have gone through as the soul in body, providing us with valuable information and tools to flow gracefully with and in this lifetime. Wow. Okay. So Spirit's just kind of reiterating what we were talking about just a minute ago, um, the soul's journey, the process, you know, you can actually call back your energy from lifetimes. Um, so call, call to you soul's lessons. Um, you can call back your power and your energy. Um, and I've done that a few times. It's a really like empowering feeling to call back that energy and the lessons from other lifetimes. I feel like the soul remembers, um, you know, the mind doesn't because, you know, this is the physicality, but the soul remembers. So very interesting energy. I really love that. Woo. All right. Yeah, I hear God force energy and I'm looking for one more. There we go. I hear God force energy or divine universal energy. I hear Christos consciousness. It's like whatever you call that, 
the all that is, is what I want to say. I heard take back your power. So spirit is encouraging you. If you are in a down, downward spiral, spiral or having a hard time, call back your power. Take back your power. Eights may be important um, right now. You could look up triple eight. I feel like that might be important for you. Something about the radio and songs that come on the radio. You might be thinking something and then a song comes on that has the exact same energy of the thought you were thinking. Um, I feel like it's spirit kind of talking through music for you. So that could be for someone. You'll know if that's for you. You could be in your 50s. You could be in your 20s. You could be from 20s to 50s to 60s, 70s. I'm seeing it all. Um, 80s. Wow. Okay, so... I feel like spirit is just saying, um, you know, you could start in your teens with this spiritual energy and it could go throughout your lifetime um, still experiencing brand new experiences up into your 80s and 90s. And, you know, if you make it to 100 and beyond, whoo, what a blessing, right? Um, tough, but a blessing. Yeah, spirit's just kind of allowing everything to flow through. If you see your initials, I do feel like pouring all of a sudden when I say your initials, because I feel like there are not um, enough initials out here to um, match with everybody watching. If you felt something and it resonated with you, take that, utilize that intuition. Um, so if you don't see it and you feel it, that's what's for you, right? Oh, come back here, T. All right. Oh, and that eight. All right. Eights might be significant for someone with a T, first or last name. All right, what do we have? What do we have? All right, Spirit, what do we have for this gorgeous collective? Woo, all right. Oh, there's that star energy. Got a bunch of shining stars. I also hear a sky exploding with stars. So I do kind of feel like I hear a galaxy and lifetimes within a life. So... I feel like what spirit is trying to say is um, that universal energy that flows within you. It's like, I hear our souls never die. Um, yeah, I hear there's no end to the energy that we are. So it's like, I feel like, I feel like you just get brighter with every experience in every lifetime that you kind of come back in as an energy or incarnate. Um, I feel like, the people that I'm speaking to, I feel like the majority of you have incarnated for great purpose. I feel like I'm talking to those light workers. I'm talking to great healers. And you don't have to be in a spiritual profession to be that. You don't have, you could just be a normal, regular person walking through, walking through the life, carrying this energy, um, being that lighthouse. Um, being that lover, that caregiver. I feel like there are all different, many and varied professions that you could be in um, someday, if not yet, um, where you'll shine this light. I feel like I've got a, a bunch of really amazing souls watching. I feel like you do have a match. I feel like that didn't really come up in today's reading, um, but you might have a soulmate coming through and a really powerful one at that one that's connected by lifetimes and stars. So I feel like they're walking in your direction as well. They create peace when they come in and I feel like that's how you'll know or um, you'll give this person a sense of peace. They may be seeing you as that shining star, that warmth, that caregiver to help with transformation. Yeah, that's, you know, that's one of the biggest reasons for being here, that spirituality, and I feel like it travels. Um, you may travel to different places. You may be one of those people that goes from place to place. I almost feel like knocking on doors as well. I feel like I hear knocking on the door of the soul. So it's like you're the catalyst energy. I feel like a lot of you, I feel like I'm talking to a lot of catalyst souls. And I feel like you carry a ton of light and you key turn for so many different people that you meet. You may travel a lot. 
um, and go the distance with travel as well. Um, for other for others of you, travel may be significant in the near future. This may be unexpected as well. You may be traveling for some type of spiritual reason as well. Or your spirituality is the key that brings you the ability to travel. Could be for some. Now, we do have this star, and I want to take it to the side because I feel like there's somebody out there, and this message continues to come through. Somebody is going to notice you and your talents very, very soon. Um, I do feel like this is someone that's going to be noticed for their music or their voice. Um, and I feel like you'll know when I say that because you'll get chills or you'll feel it. It'll resonate deeply within you. I feel like I'm, t I'm saying this is for you, whoever you are. Um, it's coming in for you very, very soon. Stay optimistic. Don't lose hope. Don't lose sight of your goals. I feel like you just need that pep talk. It's like you have what it takes. And, you know, if you never give up, then you'll get where you're going. I feel like that's the key. It's like just never give up. You know where you want to be and you know there's a place for you there when you get there. It's like I don't know. I just want to encourage you. I, I just want to say keep shining like you do because I keep seeing this Archangel Michael in the background and the, the level of shine here is ridiculous. So I just want to say like you stand out for really big, beautiful reasons. And I feel like spirit is almost putting you in places where you can stand out. Okay, that is what I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Bye.